So, good morning, Hope Church. I just wanted to talk to you today about something that I've recently learned. Only yesterday, actually, that's how recent. And that's about adoption, um, what the phrase adoption meant in the Roman world. Paul used the phrase several times in his letters. Uh, one of the common ones that we know is in Romans 8, 15, where it says, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. We are now adopted into God's family so that we can call God Daddy. We don't, we're not slaves. We're not people who are in the household but subservient to. We are family members but actually when you were adopted in roman law it meant an awful lot meant more than that romans used to commonly adopt they used to if somebody didn't have um, an heir they would go around and they would look and they'd say oh fred's son i like him he would be a good heir for me and then they'd go and talk to fred and they'd say can I make your son my heir? Can I adopt him into my family? Now, Fred had three or four children. He might actually say, well, how am I going to leave an inheritance for Fred? Okay, you take him, he becomes your son. And Fred gives up all rights to his son. That's something which we may struggle to understand. But the person who was adopting, suddenly the new son has all of the rights of that new family. He changes his name and becomes known as Paul, the son of God, almighty creator of the world. People then talk about Paul, son of God, almighty, the creator of the world, with a whole new respect, a whole new way than they did when they just used to talk about Paul Bauer. Oh, he's one of those guys who just um, still walks with the enemy. It gives us a complete new respect. We are the heir of the person who has adopted us. We are part of their family. In fact, quite often, some of the Romans, they had their own children, uh, their own natural children, and they might look at their natural children and think, these guys aren't worthy to carry on my name because they're selfish or they're jealous or they're, they're spoiled brats or, or whatever. And so they would still they would adopt somebody else who they felt was more honouring and adopt that person into their family. And that person would be their principal male heir and would take over a higher place in the family than the natural children. Now that is just mind-blowing when you think that is what Paul is saying God has done for you, has done for me, has done for each of us. He has called us and made us his principal heirs each one of us is entitled to the full authority the full name the full um, wealth the full the full extent of God and what he was wanting to give to us we've left behind our old family when they're adopted into the new family their past is forgotten their past commitments are no longer their commitments they were the commitments of Paul, son of Arthur, as opposed to Paul, son of God. Paul, son of God, has completely different commitments. Their responsibilities, which they had when they were Paul, son of Arthur, are no longer their responsibilities. Their responsibilities are now new responsibilities that they take on under their new father, God. Their debts that they had when they were Paul, son of Arthur, are completely erased. Now that we that just rings so many bells, I know, with us and sin and putting our old life behind us. That's just so true. But the best thing of all, and this is the one that absolutely blew my mind, is when a Roman citizen adopted a man into his family or a child into his family, he could not under any circumstance, legally disinherit that person. He could disinherit his natural children because he didn't have a choice about those people, okay? He may be responsible for their nurture, but he didn't, he didn't know what they were going to turn out like. 
But when he adopted somebody, he knew what that person's character was like. He knew what their strengths were. He knew what their weaknesses were. He knew what their looks were like. He knew all about them. So he couldn't go to the magistrate and say, I didn't know, because he did know. So they could not be disinherited. I just wanted to give you those few thoughts and think about you are adopted into God's family. And all of those thoughts apply to you and apply to how God thinks about you. You are so, so important. You are the most important member of God's family. You cannot be disinherited. All of your past debts are erased. God is your father and you now have his name. Let me just pray for you. Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you that we are your children, that you have chosen us, that you knew us before you chose us and called us. And Lord, that you know everything about us. You know our strengths. You know our weaknesses. You know what makes us tick. And still you called us. Lord, we are honoured to be your children. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May we be blessing to you today.